It's your boy Crypto Blood. What's good? In the hood. <laughs> I don't rap anymore, people. This rap nowadays, I just I I can't even I was talking to my wife like, man, I, I feel old now because I don't even relate to the new rap that's out. All this weird stuff going on. These kids rapping about and different hair colors and all that good stuff. I don't know. I'm just I guess I'm just getting old. I like the more old school. When I say old school, now I'm now I'm talking about the '90s and early 2000s. Really, um, there are a few couple. There are a few uh, hip hop artists I like that are today current, but mostly uh, not really. I like my, you know, Jay Z's, Nas, a little Biggie, Tupac. I like two chains. Well, today is not a hip hop rap critique video. We're all things crypto here. So uh, again, thank you for joining. You guys can visit cryptoblood.io to uh, just see anything that see what crypto blood is up to. Um, we also have the web bot. Win Webbot t shirts available. The Hotto is my model, and a slew of other cryptocurrency themed t shirts available. And if you're in the Webbot chat room, make sure you ask someone in there for the promo code. You get 20% off. So that's my shameless plug on that. Let's get right into I want to tell my cigar people, uh, especially Joe Marshall. Uh, I was smoking a Monte Cristo Private Batch Number Two, one of my favorite favorite cigars. I tell you, look at this box. It comes in a huge, huge box of a hundred, hundred cigars. But what's really, what I really love about this cigar is the oiliness of the wrapper. So that really, um, that really allows for a smooth, slow burning, and very uh, tasty. Uh, cigar it's got the the aroma of this cigar is really good too it's like a, a leathery dry fruit ish type of wood you can get some wood notes in there as well so very pleasant and if you guys can get a get your hands on a private batch number two the private batch number threes are out as well i actually smoked one i actually like the private batch number two is better so uh yeah check it out if you can people so um, what I what I want to talk about today, let's just take take a look at the market cap first. So Bitcoin is sitting at uh, 97 billion in market cap, and we've got a dominance of 58.4, and uh, you know sitting near highs. We just haven't seen the alts take off too much. Litecoin took off maybe a week or so ago. Well, other than that, man, it's been kind of quiet for the crypto assets. So we're just kind of waiting for that capital to slosh back on to the other side of things. Um, and second, the thirdly, let's actually take a look at the chart for Bitcoin. So um, I've been tracking this for about two, three months now. Showing you my opinions on from a technical standpoint. Um for those who don't know, I have been charting for over 10 years. So I do have some experience in, in charting, um, primarily FX. Um, so just, just kind of give you a quick background. Um, so yeah, we had a head and shoulders pattern try to uh, develop here, but thank God we didn't have that and end up turning around and heading back to the uh, cliff high area and really blew right past that 4888 or you know you can call it 5000 range so now we're kind of in in between uh, levels here I don't have any order books or level two quotes to show you guys today I haven't even looked at any but the level two quotes if you go look at maybe the top two or three exchanges we can kind of get a gauge on price levels and where we may see more resistance so didn't have a chance to do that but I will say um, you know cliff 
Cliff has been spot on with Bitcoin, guys. I'm telling you, his his web bot, uh, predictive linguistics program algorithm has definitely been spot on with Bitcoin. So I have this green line here just because that's where I will take profits because it, it's lining up with my Fibonacci extension level. I uh, don't know which one that is. Uh, 161%, I believe. So, um, I would take profits there. Just shy of Cliff's next level of 68.88. That's where I would secure the bag, people. But we're on the space shuttle heading to Mars, people. So, looking good, looking good. Um, I don't think we'll... We probably won't see too much lower than where we are. Maybe, you know, we may see something like like that and then up. But overall, I think we're on a good path to the 6888 range. So, cool with me. So today what I wanted to talk about was Catalon Catalonia or Catalina. Um, Spain <clears throat> this kind of goes with the whole narrative I talked about um, Hartford Connecticut last week these are the signs and, and things we want to start to look for to position ourselves or continue to load the bag in crypto assets and currencies all together because as these types of events continue to unfold more and more people will be looking for an exit out of fiat uh, currencies and systems. So where are they going to go? They're not going to go into the bond market because we're, bond market has been on like a 35 plus year bull run. So that's a crowded play. Um, and then equities, we already know. We, we know what we know what that's about. So the only place they're going to be able to go and run to is the uh, crypto currency and assets and, uh, arena and also probably into uh, physical assets like precious metals um, land you know buildings and stuff like that paintings you'll see you'll see a, a price appreciation and in, in all of those types of assets as well but since we're talking about crypto, we know that definitely they will move into crypto currencies. Um, so let's take a look at this bank run imminent. Uh, Catalan separatists urge supporters to pull cash from ATMs on Friday morning. So this happened uh, over the weekend. And I pinned this uh, article to actually read to you guys and go over. <clears throat> so as tension escalates in Spain, Catalan uh, separatists are potentially about to do some real damage and hit Madrid where it really hurts. In a tweet, in a tweeted message to their 270,000 followers, Assemblée Nacional urged supporters to pull cash um, from Saxo Bank and Banco Sab Sabadia branches between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Friday to protest at their decision to shift their legal uh, domiciles out of the region. So you will start to see these types of things guys um, continue to occur the article goes on to say uh, that the, the tweet says go to one of the five main banks and take out as much cash as you can don't forget it's your money well it really is not your money uh, <laughs> it, it is not your money and that's that's what people need to uh, wake up and realize when you place money in the bank it is now you you are now a um like 
that deposit is not a credit it's a debit or a debt on their balance sheet so they essentially now owe you um because you because they take the money right so it's no longer that you're a um you actually own that cash in there when you put that money in there it's it's essentially taking you they're taking the money away from you and they have the um obligation to pay it back to you when you ask for a withdrawal but again it, it that all works when the ponzi scheme is running smoothly problem is when you have a few thousand people just a few uh, go to the bank branches and demand their money and you have an issue so um, the Catalan News, Catalan News, adds civil society organizations in Catalonia call for a mass withdrawal of money from bank ATMs on Friday at 8 a.m. in order to pressure the Spanish government. So the action targets the five main banks in Catalonia, um, and it kind of names those. Um, organi organizers call on clients of uh, Saxi Bank and Sabadia. I don't know if I'm, I'm butchering these names to show their disagreement with the bank's recent de decision to move their headquarters out of Catalonia due to escalating political crisis between governments in Barcelona and Madrid. And if you guys don't know, um, Spain is in huge trouble with their banking system. Their yields are are skyrocketing, at least last I I recall. Um, so you know it's just it's just like a pressure cooker. It's just building up pressure, and we're going to continue to see civil unrest and and really the breakdown of government and and monetary policy in these regions. And it, it'll be here too in these states. Don't worry. So one thing I do want to show you guys was this um, this this chart of bonds, and these these are the two biggest banks, their bond prices. So I talked about bonds last week, and I just want to reiterate for some of you guys, we're talking about bond prices. So the higher the bond. Uh, price the lower the yield so um the lower the price the higher the yield so that means if bond prices drop that's an issue um there's some cause for concern there so as you can see when they had the referendum bond bond prices or uh, yeah bond, bond prices for both banks crashed causing yield to skyrocket so it costs them these banks more money the the cost of money is more it's more expensive to borrow essentially is what i'm trying to say so um yeah we saw in, in this, this last little hiccup on friday we we've seen uh both banks in particular the saxa bank bonds crash their prices crash so we'll keep an eye on this and again I, as i find um you know articles that pertain to the breakdown the systematic breakdown of governments around the globe i will report on it and just keep you guys abreast so you can kind of get an overall macro view of how things are breaking down and uh prepare yourself get more cryptos people i will get cryptos before i would get precious metals and um and also, I would have cash on hand, uh, just in just in case we have any type of um, power outage or you know national disaster or North Korea sending my missiles our way or or any other way. To be to be quite frank, so um, I'll keep you guys posted. All right, uh, make sure if you like this video, hit that like button. 
And if you really like me, go ahead and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, <laughs> click that bell. And that will ensure you are alerted for every video that Crypto Blood uploads. I think that's it, ladies and gents. It's your boy Crypto Blood. I'm out.